Please subscribe. Today, you are going to draw LeBron James. Never drew before? That's okay. I broke this process down into simple steps for you. I recommend that you pause the video at the end of each step and get into the habit of looking at the reference image on the screen at least once every five seconds. To make this as easy as possible, I uploaded a print version of this lesson to my website. Go to MerrillK.com and type in LeBron in the search box. Or, if you're watching on YouTube, click the link to the right. All you will need is a pencil and some paper to draw and a Q-tip or a blending tool to do the shading in the second part of this video. Good luck. Here we go. This part has 24 steps and it will be followed by a LeBron shading tutorial. Step 1. Make a rainbow shape. Step 2. Make another rainbow shape above the first with a slightly higher arc. This will be LeBron's headband. At the end of this step, it should resemble a banana shape. Step 3. Make one more rainbow shape slightly above the top of the headband. This will be LeBron's hair. Step 4 is a little bit tricky. Add the two shapes that you see. Notice that the one on your left is slightly larger than the one on your right. Step 5. Add the backward L shape that you see. Step 6. Add the shape that looks like the Little Dipper, a pot shape. Step 7. Add the next two lines. Notice that these two lines connect with the bottom of the shape from Step 4. Step 8. Add the two small rainbow shapes for the tops of LeBron's eyes and take an extra second to notice how each end connects to form a new shape above the eye. Step 9. Add two U shapes under each eyelid. Don't make circles though. Leave the top blocked by the upper eyelid. Step 10. Take a second to observe the gross outline of the nose. Notice that the shape is about the same height as the forehead. Step 11. The next lines that you see are the outline of LeBron's mustache. Notice that the two vertical lines go directly below the mid part of LeBron's eyes. Step 12. Next, put in LeBron's upper lip. Notice that it looks like a flattened letter M. Step 13. Now put in his bottom lip. It is shaped like a boat. The shape in between the two lips looks like a, the roof of a pizza hut. Step 14. Now do your best to put in the ear shapes. Notice that his head is turned slightly so the ear on your right will be a little bit smaller. Step 15. Try to observe the line for his chin and jaw and then draw it. Step 16. Observe and add these lines for the neck. Step 17. Add the shoulders. Step 18. This V-shape will be an important shadow on the neck. Step 19. Add the W-shape between the chin and lower lip. Step 20. Connect the W-shape with the bottom of each ear. Step 21. Add the nostrils. Step 22. Add the bottom line for the eye. Step 23. Add two V-shapes under the eyes. Step 24. For the final step before we shade, notice the three shapes that are being added on the ear. Congrats for getting through part one. Here's part two uh, with shading. I'm going to be using the blending tool, which you see at the bottom right uh, hand side of the screen. Feel free to use a Q-tip. I've used them in my classroom. They work pretty well. Uh, you're going to see me use a method called cross-hatching, and I just did a tutorial for that. I'll put a link to that tutorial, which goes in a lot of depth uh, at the bottom of the screen right here. Uh, and I also want to announce that uh, I am going to post 
this part of the video, uh, but in a much slower format uh, as well, because, uh, you know, some people like to work quickly, I guess that's me, and uh, some people like to work more slowly, and I don't want to frustrate you, especially if you've worked, uh, you know, so hard to get to this point. So I'm going to post that as well, and uh, I'm putting the link at the bottom of the screen. Um, I, I, just to give you quick notes on shading and what to look for, uh, basically, my eye always goes for the darkest areas of the face first. Uh, the eyes, the eyebrows, and the hair are always going to be the darkest areas. Believe it or not, uh, even if a person has blonde hair, uh, it gets a, a much closer, obviously, with that, but you, you see such a wide range of tones, even if a person has blonde hair. Uh, the second uh, uh, most shaded area of the face is going to be the chin especially if uh, somebody has a chin like LeBron James, uh, you know, very muscular, very straight. Uh, and, um, you know, he also has facial hair. And lights are always coming from above, you know, whether it's the sun or uh, whether it's uh, uh, indoor lighting. Uh, the, the chin, especially if somebody has like a really squared uh, muscular chin, it, it's going to be darker. Um, I'm putting the reference photo uh, for this at the end of the video yeah, so that you could pause and look at the reference photo. I know I need a reference photo whenever I do any shading and um, you know that would be really helpful. If you're a beginner don't stress it out. Uh, you know just watch this a few times before you do it. Uh, I would recommend to you uh, actually uh, either taking a photocopy of your drawing or scanning it. Scanning it is much better because you could print it as many times as you want before you try this. But uh, you, you see me use uh, three things. Uh, I'm using either the pencil, I'm using the eraser, or I'm using the blending stump. And each one of them has a slightly different purpose. Um, you know, the pencil obviously is where you get all of the tones. The blending stump, it kind of pushes things down. Like sometimes when you leave it on the page, when you put the pencil down on the page, it leaves it a little bit spotty, and the blending stump kind of pushes it down. And you could put another layer of pencil on top of that. Okay, here's the reference photo, so I guess that means i got to end. Um, but yes, there's going to be a longer version of this video as well. Um, and uh, I'll put the link again at the end here. Thank you. Bye.